Iswail Makwat. Good day, everyone. Aikwasemi. It is good to see you all here today. Peepiel Telsqui. My name is Vivian Sirwar. I'm the current district principal of Indigenous Education with Suwalsawas Indigenous Department. And I'm so happy to see all of you here today. I'm humbled to be here in Stalo territory in this beautiful place with the mountains, the trees, the river, the rocks, the plants and the creatures that dwell here and this beautiful rain that we are receiving today. This has been the home of the Stalo people since time immemorial. And what you see here today is a mere moment in time compared to the rich history of the First Peoples who have served as stewards of this land for, millenn for millennia. Today the Stalo people share this land with many newcomers, including myself and my family. It is important to acknowledge that this sharing has not always been easy. In fact, it has been challenging. And today, we would like to thank the people of Kwantlen, Lakamal, Scowlitz, and Matsqui for allowing us to be here today and to share the beauties of this land. Before we begin, I would like to, there's a few housekeeping things which I would like to mention. I first of all would like to acknowledge the work of the planning group who we will call up later on to thank them for their work. Worked really hard today to create a speakers list for this very special day. And in Phyllis's own words, history in the making. We have on-site counseling staff here today we have Dan Kim from First Nations Health Authority. And Dan, I'm sorry, but I'm not sure where you are. <laughs> oh, there he is. He's over there waving his hand. Hi, Dan, thank you for coming today. We also have Ross and Lorraine from the Indian Residential School Survivor Society who are on site with us today. As you probably noticed, we have bannock and some food so feel free to partake in the the bannock and the food that we have which is directly behind me we have portable toilets which are or washrooms which are just over there in addition to those that are open for the event that are on site 
We have garbage, can, clan, bar, garbage cans and recycling bins. Please make sure that we are good stewards of this earth and we take everything from the park, what we brought with us. So please do not leave anything behind. After the event, we also will have some cedar brushing happening by Magnus and Dion. And that will be happening, I believe, directly behind me in the grassy area where the blue tent is. So to start us off today, I would like to pass the microphone to some gentlemen from La Camel. We have Phil Sherwood and Jason Thompson who will be sharing words with us and possibly some drumming and singing. And a little bit of karaoke. Aswael <laughs> <laughs> Makwat. Mechitel, Telkul Moskui, Telitzel Kwa, Lak Amel, E Tel Squalwell, Quals Quitzlala, Kwa E will mit Mukwat, a whale, Hiuk Muk, Stakwish Swale, a whale, E Kusach Ami, Te Chacha Li, Te Lak Amel, Tamuch, Casta Stalo Tamuch. Good day, everyone. My traditional name is Mechitel. My English name is Jason Thompson. I stand beside my, my brother, our council member for La Camel First Nation. Uh, he also asked me to speak on behalf, so we'll try to keep it as short as I can, but sometimes I do like to go off on a bit of a storytelling tangent. And uh, I do wanna pay a little homage that uh, myself, being a former um, uh, uh, di uh, student of the school district of Mission, uh, graduate of uh, 2005, I think, Ms. Shaw. <laughs> so I, I seen her standing over here and I felt her looking at me. I wanted to give her that shout out <laughs> because it's, it's support from people like her and those in our school district that make days like this, events like this, monumental not just to the to the ones that are here today that your children share time at school with each other but all of us that that all come together to, to share this time to understand or do our best to understand what is it that we're going through you know it's it's been a a quiet period for the last few months since things have have cooled down with some of these recent discoveries and then and, and the things that have happened in this territory on this land that we're at right now there has not been that a tell squalwell that good feeling in this property property where the first school was built for St. Mary's. And in, in the back corner, you, you see the result of, of today happening. You know, with what has happened over the last few months, these, these, our, our children that didn't make it home, our, our ancestors, they showed themselves to us, to every one of us, indigenous or not. They chose this time, today, during the, the most trying and difficult time in our modern history, to come forward and, and give each and every one of us that's here today and that's celebrating similar events across the country. A reason to come together in a time when we haven't been able to gather to do our ceremonies and to come together and celebrate. And what that is, it's a glimpse 
a small glimpse of all that grew up in our communities are used to. The legacies that the 60s scoop, the residential schools, the day schools, the legacies that those were left behind for us to experience whether we went to them or not. We come here today to understand what it is that happened and how do we explain that to those that are just learning about it. I really want to raise my hands to each and every one of you that are here today. Because I think back during the time that I was going to school, this is completely foreign. You would not see this. Not because that it didn't matter, but because we as a people, let's all squallow, we are all one. We as a people, we're not ready to understand. And, and these ones that, that are here with us today that you cannot see, like I said, they came forward in this time to give us that reason to all come together and squallow, lift, lift our feelings up and, and teach and share with, with these, these young ones that are here with us today. And I want to thank all of you for, for bringing your children because it's days and times like this, they're going to be able to say they were here. They were the first ones here. And, and what they're learning here is, is not going to change the past, but it's going to change the present and how we understand and look at the past. So with that, I want to thank you all for coming forward and, and offering your time to be here in this beautiful wet weather. You know, some, some of us, we, we kind of get a little uh, dreary about the rain, but this, this is our, our cleansing, our, our washing. So this weather is the most fitting to happen on days like this. So with that, I want to thank you all, Yathu Kwasai, for, for being here today and sharing this day with us. Kwasai, and thank you so much, Jason, for sharing those words, much needed words today. Appreciate you coming today and, and, and being here. Asiyam Nisiyaya, Inta Pekwaechun, Tanich Tanach Skaulitz, Ay Nishkwalawan Kwanasi Lamnala, Stay Stuch Tishkwalawans to Salkwen, Hai Tabka Yuanam at Tanakwail, My name is Johnny Williams. My Aboriginal or ancestral, ancestral name is Kwaakun. As you heard, I'm the current elected chief of my community in Scowlitz. It's good to see everybody here today. On behalf of our elders, we thank everybody for coming. You know, it's so good to see and very fitting to have so many young people here. You know, one of the things about this day, and I have to be truthful, I was a little torn little torn about the, them turning around and I hate them using the term that this is a holiday. But today of remembrance, no different than Remembrance Day. 
We need to understand the difference, though. The people who lost their lives fighting for our country are honored, while our children lost their lives because of our country. I couldn't comprehend what some of our elders have gone through in during these times in these schools. I was very fortunate. I didn't go. I was allowed, the schools were still open. I can remember when kids were there when I was in school, but I didn't go. My parents were one of the few really, really resilient. And they did their best, and I believe they were successful in breaking that chain of that negativity with me. You know, we need people to understand. We're not asking for pity about this. We're asking for understanding. And we need general society to accept the atrocities that happened. It breaks my heart right now when you hear some of the testimonials coming out from some of our elders, what they witnessed. I can't comprehend. I'm the father of seven. I couldn't imagine sending my kids off to school and only four of them coming home and given no explanation. <laughs> we need society to understand and to accept We're trying to break that hard negativity that happened. But anything to do with trauma, as we're all well aware, it's not as simple as just saying we're going to break down that wall. Because every time that we come forward and we work with somebody, we're tearing not we're not even tearing off I hate to use the term scabs, we're tearing off scar tissue. And that causes even more damage, and we're trying to help. For the amount of people that are here, I have to say, it warms my heart. We weren't ex I wasn't expecting to see this many because of the weather. But this shows me and tells me people are starting to understand. People are starting to accept. The next part, we need people to help us to not tolerate this. There's actions that need to happen that haven't. And for whatever reason, as a leader of my community, and talking with some of our elders, the next hard pill to swallow is, we know what's going on, we know what happened. No action has been done. Why? I don't know. But this is where we need the help of everybody in the general public to bring forward and say, this has to be dealt with. This can't be just brushed under the carpet and say, oh, oops unfortunate but with that thank everybody for coming forward to being here with us today to stand with us you know it's one of our teachings when we have gatherings and most of us know we go to them 
It's not that you have to go forward and present yourself to the family that's hosting the ceremony. But to be seen at that ceremony, knowing that you were there, shows that you cared. You took that time out to be there at that ceremony. And that's the way this is. I can only name off probably 50 people in the crowd. But my heart's warm seeing everybody here. So with that, Yashis Pashayas Yam Chayas. Kwasai, Chief Johnny, and before you run away, <laughs> I appreciate you so much, Johnny. Thank you for coming today. I'm just going to remind uh, those of us who are in the undercovered area that this elder, this area is re reserved for Indigenous elders as well as volunteers, please. Okay, Indigenous elders and volunteers. At this time, I'd like to ask Kwantlen elders Cheryl Gabriel and Lakaton to come up. My heart is so full right now. Thank you. Thank you, everybody that's coming still down the hill. Everyone's here because of all this young Shwili, of all the students that went to this school over time. My name is Cheryl Gabriel from Kwantlen First Nation. I'm the education coordinator, and I've been uh, part of CYLC West, this wonderful advisory group, our brave elders, and all elders. We brought our elders from Kwantlen that came to this school and their family members. Josette, <coughs> Hazel, Ricky, Grace, Ron, Luke, Walter was our driver on the school bus, and my husband, Lakaton. And I know I probably forgot a few people. Please forgive me for, for not remembering. One of my elders, Renee Inkster, said, I'll pray for the words that will come out of you, Cheryl, today. My traditional name is Squayetan. It's a very old traditional name from Kwantlen. Ever since they've had the Orange Shirt Day celebration here at this park and also commemorating the site where our older uh, buildings were for the uh, residential school. I really want to reach into everybody's heart and your mind and your, your shwali, your spirit, that the earth is bringing the energy out into you and the rain on top of us because water replenishes everything, even us. We're the same as the rocks and the dirt, the grass, the trees. All the bugs that bug us, like mosquitoes, wasps, every, everything has a role in our lives. I want you to think about this right now. All that have come today, 
you are representative of the spirits of all the residential school survivors. Even if it wasn't in your family, you are here. Something made you come here today. We're here because of the strength of our elders. So strong. Quam quam. The shirt, the shirt that I have on me was created for today. And it's so fitting, the words, that every child comes home now. And they're back there. They're in the ground. They're in the trees. There's a, a stairway over there still of the people that stepped on those steps to go to school. I heard from my cousin on our way here, he said, Ricky said, I used to hate coming back to that school. And our sister, my sister-in-law, Josette, she went out and spoke on the experiences of residential school for more than five years, maybe longer, I don't know, but eight years. Thank you, Luke. Her son just told me. And I couldn't imagine, like with Johnny and the young man before, Jason, I couldn't imagine what it was like to leave my family, see them off on the train, go the farthest way from home. But even for us in Kwantlen, we never had cars until the 60s. The only one that had a car was Lakaton's brother, Willis. He was our, our go-to person for the hospital. But I want you to know that I carry their words from over time. And just recently, my aunties, my dad's sisters, Auntie Barbara, Auntie Helen, shared at a elders conference, a language conference, that their sisters didn't come home. And that their dad uh, my grandpa, Alfred, came up to pick them up and they had been gone five months prior. I, I was thinking if I stood there and they told me that, what was my reaction? I think I would fall on the ground. I think I would fall on the ground. How dare you not tell me sooner? But I'm not going to put you, don't go there now. Come back to me now, now, today. Today is Kwam Kwam Day. Be strong. Kwam Kwam said, we are strong. My sister, Marilyn, I want you, as well as the prayers to all the residential school survivors and their families and their friends that are here, and everyone that's here that's a teacher, principal, a college student, university student, a life student, that's all of you, that you carry forward you are the f forging forward. I look at us as a, like a plow. We're plowing away the layers of acts that have put us in those residential schools. And that today we're still fighting. And people, some people, not all people, they want us to get over it. But we can't because it's history. It's, it was a war, and it's still a war. 
that we have to go through. And I need your help. You help my elders. You help all people, all the little people. And as we say, every child matters, we mean it. When we go to the schools, my elders, they've been working in the school district for a long time and now they're getting older and tired and had surgeries. But they're here, I was, I'm so proud of them. I'm so proud of you, all of you, for coming here. But right now, today, we're skakalas, we're babies. We're learning and listening from other nations. There's so many nations in British Columbia, 204 nations. 60% of our languages are here in British Columbia. 60%. And we need to keep it strong. And I heard from Brenda Lacaton's cousin, Pierre, used to be Pierre, that she's teaching seven classes a day, five days a week. And we're still searching for more teachers for the Hukamalam language, Hukamalam language, Hukamalam language, Michif. Every language, we need to keep it strong. Our culture strong, our history strong. Go talk to the elders, go listen to the elders. We're making videos now for them, that their story stays alive and that their journey wasn't in vain. That they are showing us today, they're so resilient. And now that resiliency is in all of you because we're in sync. Synchronicity, everybody. Reciprocal. Energy. Universal. International. National. Every culture has a story. But today, it's in commemoration of our truth and reconciliation, our United Declaration of Rights, as indigenous people, that we are recognized that our words mean something. That the little, little one, the little baby that's yet to talk, that his words mean something. And that I remember my aunties as little girls with all of you coming down that hill, sitting amongst you, giving you strength to sit here through the cold and the rain. And giving our strength to all of our elders. I want um, our drum group to come up because the uncle's gonna sing a song and I would love you guys to come. And one is Marilyn's son, Michael. And I want you to know that my sister had to go to the hospital this morning. So I'm asking if you could please send her prayers because I believe in it and it will give her strength to meet the days still ahead because she's a young elder, young leader. I wanna thank all the ones that came and helped us come here because you know what? All of you needed to be here for us, for my elders, for all elders. So I'm going to stop now because like Jason said, I could go on and on. And I have a pink cup that my daughter gave me, Cassandra, and it says blah, 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 and that's totally me. And I hope you didn't hear blah, blah, blah from me. And my husband says, yes, he, I do blah, blah, blah. <laughs> And I want to thank you because I'm going to hand the mic to Michael because he's the leader's son and I want to honor that and then look at him. Okay, Dad? Quick for you first? Okay. Thank you, everybody.
Oh, I'm gonna take you out here, Auntie. Okay. <laughs> Had it wrapped around her leg. Hey, CM Cia. I start the day off by thanking our Chitzel CM. That's our higher power above us. I was taught by my uncle Eugene Harry. He's one of the historians that we go to to ask for guidance. We thank our ancestors before us. And I want to look behind me and raise my hands to our elders. Thank you. Many Haichkas, Haisepka, for surviving. When I think of today, I look around and I feel warm as a young man. See the youth, all the di diversity coming together as lots of mat, one mind, one heart, one spirit. Yaya is still working together. When you come together as those two things, great things happen. But today is all about healing on our journeys going forward. My grandma Maureen, I spent lots of time with her as a young boy. And she shared lots of teachings of life and I didn't realize that until now. But she shared with me, it doesn't matter how far or how close you are to that person. Our prayer always goes where it's needed. So today, all the people that come here on our traditional territories, our shared traditional territories, I ask you to come here with an open mind and an open heart. I ask you to come here with love in your mind and love in your heart. I ask you to come here and pray in your own way for all the ones that are here that need to be uplifted in a good way. That's what our old ones need today. We send a prayer and we ask our ancestors through the beats of our drum, the heartbeat of our people, but also the heartbeat of our ancestors to come join us today for the children that didn't come back home so that they know that we're still thinking about them to this day. Those children have brought so much things. Those 215 children starting in Kamloops Look around, it all brought us together today. And as I was sharing earlier today, it's much more than just a half leg raised. It's much more than two and a half minutes of silence. It's every day that we need your support as a collective, as Canada. It shouldn't be our own people uplifting our people. We should have Canada as a whole uplift us. We go around and we share these stories. I share my grandma's story. And even though I didn't go, we're still products of these, this generational trauma to this day. So I thank my brothers and sisters that are with me, all the elders here that are still here, the children that are here, because without them, we wouldn't be anything. It's the reason why we sit around a table and we make these decisions. We want a better life for our next generations. That's what our Siam Stakwasan always shares. She says, if you sit here for yourself, you're sitting here for the wrong reasons. I sit here for the next seven generations. That's how far ahead I think. So I'm asking you, when we hear these elders speak, I ask you to listen more than just with your ears. I ask you to listen with your eyes, ears, mind, and heart, your thala. Because when you listen with just your ears, when you hear our homo people speak, you'll miss a lot of messages and lots of important stories that you need to take back. But today, I'm asking all my family here, because we just broke bread. You've seen the amazing bannock back there, it's real good. When we break bread and we share culture and we share our ways, my grandpa Herb Joe from Chiacton, he's took me under his wing. He's a traditional speaker. He says, when we walk away here today, we're no longer strangers, we're no longer friends, we're family. And when you hear our old people share all our relations, we are related up and down the river. So today, as a young man, thinking of all these elders, my elders right here, I love so dear, dearly, and all the elders that are here that I raise my hands up to, I ask you for your prayers and for those children as well so that they know where home is. So with that, I say all my relations, I'm going to pass it to my uncle, the gate. Thank you very much. Awesome. 
my dear elders, those of you who have traveled a long way today, knowing, knowing the scars that are within are still open. I don't know if there's any human on this earth that can close those scars in a way that the Creator put us on here to look after each other. My name, my dear ones, is Lekaitan from Stahelis territory. My father, Kuya, passed his name to me in 1993 to ensure I will always remember his great-great-uncle, Lekaitan, whose family is buried on the Long Island in Harrison Hot Springs. My mother from Scotland, Mabel Flardu, and my relatives, her relatives from Lackahaman, the Thompson family, is my grandmother's name, Thompson. My grandfather was Métis from Quebec, George Pilardo. He came to British Columbia with the first Hudson Bay Company in Scotland. He lived there for many, many years. I didn't really get to know him because I was only five years old when he passed on. I was four when my grandmother, Teresa Thompson, passed on, like a Hammond. So when my dear ones, you understand bloodline of your families, you understand who you are and where you're from, it's so important that the languages that we married into were languages from different nations. And we had to survive our own way of life. That you're sitting on and standing on, every rock is sacred. Sacred. It's as sacred as your heartbeat. Your heartbeat. That's sacred. When you were young, my dear ones, when you were young, this is who you were right there, the babies. This is who you were at one time. And now that third generation is already sitting there in Scotland. I have my great, great, great nieces living in Scotland. That's four generations beyond me already. Four generations beyond my name already here. I have seen many generations where there was five generations of people in a picture. That's five generations of history that they're carrying. When our dear ones go on to the spirit world, their teachings remain on this land for us to pass on, pass down, and to always speak the truth. When our elders come here today, they remember the sad, sad truth because it still hurts today. Our elders, they sing songs of tears. They sing songs of happiness. They sing songs when a baby is born. They sing songs that bring us back to the longhouse teachings. Because at those days we stood on the banks of the river to welcome people that are going by our nation. 
our chiefs and council of people now, it's their job now to keep teaching the truth of history. No matter how it makes you feel, you have to understand it's the truth that we're bringing. And today I was so proud that the Maple Ridge Environmental School walked with me down that hill. That's where I've been for six years as well. They have a school now in Maple Ridge where all the children are outdoors every day learning in the mountains, at the lakes. It's so good to see because that's how we learned a long time ago. Outdoors, outdoors. Before the buildings were here, that's how our elders taught us. I remember the women, the grandmothers, going to each house to teach and talk, have tea, talk about the laws of the land and the laws of mankind, and teach it with great respect. Awesome. I remember peeking in the longhouse, the cracked, the cracked door, um, planks on the longhouse and watch the grandfather sitting around a fire talking about the stories of when they were growing up and their grandfather's stories of where they hunted, how much they hunted and how much food they gathered. I still remember. I stand here before you today because I had five sisters and two brothers that came to this school. I was next in line to come, but I ran away. I had to run. But I watched their lives change, and I watched the lives change of many of my cousins and people on the reserve. And then they put us in day schools. If I took this shirt off, you're going to see many scars on my body that are still open. The memory of the families that had to live that life, but you know, we, we could not compare it to anything because there was no comparison of what happened. You could not compare it to anything. As time went and our children came home, we started to understand the true life of what happened to our people. Many, many leaders of our families across Canada today are celebrating today. I want to share something with you. I want to share something with you that was taught to me. A moment of silence for all those that walked on this earth before I was born. My dad was only three years old when he was taken. He lived to be 93. And he told me about those things of truth. I ask you now to have a moment of silence. A moment of silence for all those that are sitting here with the great memory of our families. After that, we're going to do a song that we can all join. So as we speak right now and stand, my dear ones, I ask you to stand at this time, if you can. And we're going to remove our hats. We're going to remove the masks. I want you to remove your glasses as well. 
They want to see you in your true face of when you were born. The tiny tots that were here years and years ago, they want to see who's here. Maybe you're related to them. You stand for your families and you stand for the truth of our little tiny tots that were born to walk that tiny pathway and the song we're going to sing, you will understand why I did this today. I want to ask for your forgiveness as well for taking so long. I also want to exemplify my respect for each child that journeyed here today with a parent or a school or a teacher. I thank every human being that come here today to respect this day on Orchard Day in respect of all the children that walked before us. I want to thank the survivors for sharing their true, true stories of their lives. I want to thank all the leaders for coming. I want to thank everyone who organized this day today, not only today, but also from the first day you did this, and it's growing so fast. This is what happens when one person has a thought. This is a person's thought that brought us all here year after year after year. We walk on your land today and we walk with great respect for your families. And I thank you, my dear one, for organizing this as well. Everyone here that walked this land loves you so much today because your heart is so big. Your generosity and your caring is so big. You are a great, great teacher. Thank you. The song I have in mind with the drummers that are going to drum. I also ask my environmental school students if they're still here to come forward and join us. I know they walked behind me, Dave, and the environmental school that is teaching outside, outside every day. This weather does not bother them because they're outside every day, like how we used to do it when there was no buildings built. Don't know if they're here. But now I ask the drummers this song that I'm going to do. It's of great importance. And it brings the tears of the land to our nations. It brings a memory of who walked on this land before us. It brings great memories of how our people brought back these songs to make sure we do not forget them. We do not forget them. Hey, oh, hey, oh, Makes me cry, makes me cry 
when I see where you used to walk. Oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, oh, hey, oh, oh, hey, oh, 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 hey, oh, hey, oh, makes me cry. Makes me cry when I see where you used to walk. Makes me cry, makes me cry when I see where you used to walk. Hi, Chuck. Heights of God to everyone, heights of God to elders, leaders, my memory of everyone who was born for a reason, who was still here for a reason, who still, who still remain with a great deal of respect, honor, dignity, and grace, and your teachings of who you remember taught you. I ask that you all Remain like this for the rest of your life. Don't ever forget who you are and why you're here. For many, many years, you're going to teach these little children in tiny tots the truth, the truth. Learn how to speak the truth and understand truth. Don't remember the laws of the land that hurt people those laws of the land that are written in the constitutions are there to hurt the people. But I know, standing here today, you're too strong for that. We are too strong for that. We know that when the schools open the doors next week, they're going to talk about this day. When you go home tonight, talk to your children about this day. Pick up your cell phones and call your families and tell them what a great day you had with the elders of the nations from across British Columbia and the United States. With that, my dear ones, Haitipka, all my relations. Kwasai, Lakayton, and Cheryl, and the family members that they brought with them from Kwantlen. I, I had the pleasure of sitting down, well, virtually last spring with both Lakayton and Cheryl, and they, they gave me their time, and their time is so precious. And something that Cheryl said to me that day, I think about it every, every so often, and she said, Vivian, this is warrior work, and whenever I find it, find times challenging, which they of course are, I just always think of your words, Cheryl. They sit here right in my heart. So thank you so much to both of you. At this time, I'd like to call up Superintendent Angus Wilson to share a few words. Thank you, Vivian. I had to write it down. Friends, chiefs, matriarchs, all you good people, thank you for allowing me to speak. Thank you for everyone here witnessing this day. As many of the speakers have said, I'm so grateful for the a range of people that are here. I'm happy to see so many teachers and so on as well today. <clears throat> Thank you to uh, Vivian Sirwar, of course, for leading the organization of this day. Thank you to Phyllis Webstad for uh, starting something so powerful and so tremendous that has brought us all together. I'd like to thank also all the speakers who have already spoken, but especially Johnny because he slipped me some candied salmon, and that's not a bad thing. 
for us settlers, it's a bit of an uncomfortable day. And Indigenous people would have every right to meet us with anger and vengeance. And instead, they meet us with patience and love. Many non-Indigenous folks have wondered, why not get over this dark chapter? I had nothing to do with it. Let's move on. My father was an immigrant. These terrible things started before my family even came to Canada. I didn't do it. A few days ago, I got a couple of interesting emails telling us to stop wallowing in the past. But in the great web of life, the strands reach both far and deep. In my own family, my grandmother, an immigrant, was a matron at Yukon Hall, a residential school. My father, an immigrant, was an Indian agent in the 1960s, which inevitably included ensuring children received an education as dictated by the federal government. My brother was adopted via the 60s scoop and never knew his family, his community, or his culture. My beautiful partner is the granddaughter of a man who ran away from Kokolitsa three times. As a school district in a place called Mission, consider what that name means. Even as integration of Indigenous children began in the public schools here in the 1970s, it was hardly an integrated, inclusive, or inviting environment for those children. So all of us are connected to those events, and they are not so very long ago. While we all hold a mutual responsibility to acknowledge the terrible events of the past, we can also acknowledge the beautiful resilience and resistance Indigenous people across Canada have demonstrated. They are still here, their cultures are still here, and they give us all lessons on wisdom, love, and joy. On behalf of Mission Public Schools, I want to acknowledge not just the dark lessons the past teaches us, but the work that has been done and must continue to be done for and by the survivors and relations of residential schools. As a school district, we have a special responsibility and it's one we must take seriously and humbly. We do the best we can until we know better, and then we do better. Thank you everyone for this day. Thank you. Kwasai, um, Superintendent Wilson, there you go. I, I do uh, want to just say that Angus, um, over the past few years, I feel really fortunate to be able to work with you, alongside you, especially um, with the work that, that I do in the role in the district. I'm, I just feel incredibly fortunate to know that you are always so supportive and right there be beside us all. So thank you. This day has been about two years, I would say, in the making. About two years ago this time, I contacted Phyllis Webstad and at that time was um, given the information for her booking agent at the time. And I thought perhaps that it would be, you know, we'd really like to have Phyllis come to speak to the staff and students. We usually have a March for Reconciliation on this day, and we've had for several years. The first time we did the march, we had 300 staff and students participate in, the, in that first march. The second year, we had 800, and it slowly grew up to about 1,200 back in 2019. So at that time, I thought, you know, it would be really great to have Phyllis come and speak and do this with us. And so I called them, and of course, uh, they had said she was booked for 2020, which ended up, that was great anyways that she was booked because it was, it was COVID and, and, and we wouldn't have been able to, to continue with it. And I said, that's okay, you know what? When is she next, when, when is the next year that she's available? Because just put me on the list or put us on the list. And it was 2021 and I thought, okay, you know what? This is great. So, um, Phyllis, I want to thank you for your patience with me through the past two years because every three months I would email, email them and say, hey, I just want to make sure that we're still booked for September 30th, 2021. And they'd say, yes, Vivian. You know, six months later, I'd say, I'd call them, I'd email them again and say, hey, just checking to make sure. And they're, yes, Vivian. So, early in the spring, specifically in June, um, I guess, you know, when we first booked this back in 2019, we had absolutely no idea what lay ahead of us. And since that time, 
We've endured a global pandemic and still continue to endure that. We've heard the news of the recovery of now over 6,000 Indigenous children in unmarked graves on or near Indian residential schools across Turtle Island, which of course, it's not really news because we've been told by the elders that they've knew that all along. And finally, in June, with the official designation of September 30th as a National Day of Truth and Reconciliation, which of course all began with Phyllis's story. We are so fortunate to have you here today, Phyllis, on this historic day, in her words, when we first met to start planning this. She said, this is history in the making and I'm so happy that you are all here to share this important day with us, this important work with us. And with that, I would like to pass the mic to Phyllis Webstad. Cooks Jam, thank you. I hope those in the back, I went to the washroom earlier and you couldn't really hear back there, so Give me a wave if you can hear by the tree over there. Good, 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 okay. Wade, good, good, at Phyllis Webstad Rensquest. Strachem chatstam stakwin. What I said was, hello everybody here today. My name is Phyllis Webstad. I'm from the Kennel Creek, Dog Creek First Nation. Uh, there were two residential schools in Shuwatmuch Ulach, the land of the Shushua people. The one that I attended at St. Joseph Mission uh, Indian Residential School, about 20 minutes out of Williams Lake and to come loops that you've heard recently. So there were two in our nation. And I just wanted to uh, acknowledge my fellow survivors behind me. Uh, Jam, thank you for, for being here. Uh, survivors from even uh, Ontario I met today. So Jam, thank you all survivors and your families. This is a day about, about us, survivors and families and, and those that, that never came home. Someone told me recently that it was just for survivors, but that's never been the intent. We would never do such a thing and forget this, the families and the children that never made it home. The residential school that I attended, three generations of my family went starting with my grandmother in 1925 to 1935. All of Granny's 10 children, including my mother, attended from 1954 to 1964. Granny's eldest grandchild, I'm Granny's second eldest grandchild, I attended for one year when I turned six in 1973. My experience was a walk in the park compared to Granny and her children. And I'm here today because they survived. The mission, as we called it, was a Catholic-run school, open from 1891 to 1981, the same year that my son was born. Survivors in Williams Lake are 46 years old and older. We still have survivors' children in our school system in the elementary and the high schools. So it's a, uh, a bit different. I've only been asked to speak twice in my, in my own school district because the pain is real and it's current. Orange Shirt Day was started in, it was born in April of 2013. It was a response to Murray Sinclair's challenge to Canadians to keep the conversation happening after the TRC wrapped up and as we all know the final report was in June of 2015. There's a bit of a story to it. I didn't just roll out of bed one day and decide September 30th was Orange Shirt Day. There's a whole list of people, a whole list of events that happened and we have a book called Orange Shirt Day that was published last year and uh, uh, Cookby or Chief Fred Robbins from the Esket, the Esketum First Nation or Alkali Lake was the one that opened the door for Orange Shirt Day. Because when the TRC came to Williams Lake in May of 2013, he invited everyone. 
indigenous obviously and non-indigenous people and that's where I was able to tell my story for the first time. Before I tell my story I just want to uh, acknowledge those nations that attended the mission. There was the Shehuetm or the Shushwap, the Chalcotin or the Chalcotin, the Deketh or the Southern Carrier people. There was the Statlam people, people from Whistler, Pemberton, Lillooet, Mount Curry. They were brought in by rail car. And there was also the Nuhalk, the Bella Kula, Bella Bella people were brought over to the, the mission at Williams Lake. I know I had something to say and I forgot it when I started talking about that. Um, we chose September 30th because that's the time of the year that the children were taken from their homes and their families. We chose the 30th because we wanted children time to settle in, the students with their teachers and for the teachers to teach what happened. And we wanted time to plan events such as this. When I was at the last TRC event in Vancouver mid-April of 2013, I overheard an elder say that September was crying month. And I knew then that we had chosen the right day for Orange Shirt Day. They were crying in our communities for the children that were taken. And the we that were taken were crying at the residential schools for our families. So I knew that we had chosen the right day. I grew up in Khatstam, in Dog Creek, with my grandmother. My mother went for 10 years. She was too traumatized to take care of me. And she had me when she was 20. When I was three months old, the Indian agent told my mom and others from our community that they had to leave to go make money. They weren't going to give them welfare. It was starting to be about money then, like it is today. But we had lived for thousands of years on the land, and all of a sudden it was about money. So mom had to leave, and I have her permission to say she became an alcoholic and was never able to come and get me. I never lived with her. We have a book out called Beyond the Orange Shirt Story. It came out September 1st. Six generations of my family story. And I know teachers and students, the students ask, what happened? Why, why don't you ever talk about your mom and your orange shirt story or your dad? What happened to them? So in that book, I explain about my mother and I explain about my father. When I, in that book, I start with saying, my name is Phyllis Mabel Celestine Jack White. I added white on because that's the only thing I knew about my father. And I never met my father. I met the man that my mom said was my father when I was 21. And he's been my father ever since. And I, I talked to him this morning as I, he lives in Calgary. And I always start the conversation with, uh, hello, this is me, is that you? <laughs> and he knows it's me calling. And. Um, but in uh, about 2016, I wanted to learn more about my dad's family and I was doing a family tree and uh, he's Irish and French and we did the DNA test, found that he was not my father. It's been a hard few years for both of us. And I found my biological father, he lives in Kamloops. And uh, I met him in December of 2018 at first, they wouldn't accept me. Uh, he, his wife died in 1987, and they had eight children. And uh, one has since passed, but all of them live in Kamloops. So I now have two dads. So when my, my, one of them phones and my husband answers, and he's like, your dad called. Oh, which one? <laughs> <laughs> so for, it was like, it was, hard to explain the knowing that like releasing well not releasing but um uh, they'll always be both of them will be 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 my dad's 
So there's a bit more of that in, in my book as well. I was pregnant when I was in grade eight. I had my son uh, in grade eight. On my 14th birthday, my son was four months old and I never did have any more children than my uh, aunt that took me from granny when I turned 10. Her name is Agnes. Her story is in the book as well, but thank goodness she didn't find out about me being pregnant until it was too late to do anything. So my son, uh, he turned 40 in March, and I have five beautif beautiful grandchildren, three boys and two girls, age 17, 12, 5, 3, and 1. And uh, I've never been with them on Orange Shirt Day. I'm always out traveling. I'll chat with them later. I'll, I'll Facebook with them. But with the proceeds of my book, I want to take 15 of us. And uh, I think I might be a bit crazy trying to uh, think of uh, getting us all over to Niagara Falls. Because Niagara Falls turns orange on the Canada and the BC side for 15 minutes. So one minute equals 10,000, so 15 equals the 150,000. And uh, I hope I, we will be in Niagara Falls next year. And then in 2023 is the 10th year of Orange Shirt Day. And we hope to have an international event in Williams Lake uh, with a lot going on starting the Monday, Orange Shirt Day in 2023 is a Saturday. So we hope, plan to hope have things happening all week, so. And I wanted to explain Every Child Matters because some people uh, uh, say, well, why not indigenous children matter? Why not all lives matter? Why not this, why not that? And my explanation is my orange shirt story. I lived with Granny until I was 10 and she did like she had done for all of her children her eldest grandchild. And so when I turned six, she did what she had always done. She got me ready to go to the mission. Even though she knew our clothing would be taken, she wanted us to be presented in our best possible way. And she, we went to town. It's about uh, maybe an hour and a half uh, ride on the bus and it was the early 70s, 1973, the hippie era with the bright colors. And I chose a shiny orange shirt. It's kind of like the, the Nemo is the best I can, uh, it, it sparkled. And it had three buttonholes on the front with kind of like a shoelace laced on the front. And, and when I got there, my clothing was taken. Everybody's clothing was taken. Uh, my story is not unique. Uh, every survivor in their family has a story of, of, of going to the residential school. And no matter how much I cried and wanted my shirt back, that uh, it didn't matter. I, uh, never ha I don't have a memory of ever wearing my shirt again. But while I was there, I learned that I was on my own, that life depend my life depended on me. I learned to dissociate, disassociate, to separate my spirit from my body, and I could go back home and be with Granny. And um, I just, I think it's that like, I'm, I just turned 54. Anybody have hot flashes and memory loss? <laughs> I think I just had a case of that. Um, okay, so I lose my shirt, and and no matter what I what I do, I never did get it back. And when I was there, I felt, and if I was sick, if I was tired, if I was hungry, if I was lonely, it didn't matter. I didn't matter. We didn't matter. Nobody was coming to tell us that it would be okay and to make us feel better. We could cry our eyeballs out. And uh, we just, five, six years old, uh, comforting each other. And so that's where Every Child Matters comes from because I felt that I didn't matter when I was there. And all survivors were children when they attended those schools. You matter. You mattered and you still do. 
And the children that never made it, they matter. Orange Shirt Day is a day to have conversation about all aspects of residential school. And it's a day to honor residential school survivors and their families and to remember those that, that didn't make it, that never made it. I used to say made it home, but now I stopped with made it. Because in addition to the ones that are in unmarked burials all across Canada, today in 2021, we continue to lose survivors and their families because of the, the experiences they had in those schools due to taking their own lives or drugs and alcohol. So today, it still affects us today. I want to talk a bit about my staff that I'm carry, that I have here. I was given this on Monday, August 30th at the mission, the St. Joseph Indian Residential School in Williams Lake. It was COVID friendly. Uh, we only can have 50 uh, gathered in, in the north where I, where I am. They made 50 of these and gave it to us. And August 30th is when the search started for the mission for the missing children and in the unmarked burials. They're searching for 32 straight days. So today marks day 32. So there will be uh, a release at some point uh, soon uh, for the findings. And it's only the beginning. And I know that every site, including this one, uh, will be searched at some point. So I acknowledge the children that are buried here in unmarked graves you will be we will come for you we you will be found and if uh if it's permittable you'll be brought home because i know the ones that will be found at the mission most likely they will be repatriated and brought home i'm thinking i am think fortunate in my family everybody made it home in granny's family and, but I know that's not the case in every family. There was seven of our family that contracted tuberculosis and were sent to Kokolitsa, not too far. I wanna go there because my story could have been very different. And I look at my aunts and I'm thankful that they came home because the story could have been that I had an aunt and she didn't come home from Kokolitsa, but she's with us today and she survived. And I know every family, uh, that's not their story. I quit my job in April of 2019 working for the Williams Lake First Nation because I could no longer work full time and do orange shirt stuff full time. It was getting too big. And we formed the Orange Shirt Society in, uh, in 2015 and we opened an office in 2019. And uh, last year was the first year that we took over the logo contest for our shirts every year. And I just want to ask Shane to come and stand with me while I explain this. The very first year was 2013. In 2014, I uh, made a shirt uh, and I had it on one of those shirt sites and I made a whole 300 and I think it was $362 or something like that. I was proud that I had sold so many shirts. And, uh, but every year people were asking, well, what's the design this year? What's the design this year? So I think one year I, I got it from Calgary and then uh, Andy Everson made a design in 2017. And so then we thought, well, let's have a contest. And uh, Leading Edge Promotions out of Langley ran the contest for a couple of years because we didn't, like I was working full time. But last year the Orange Shirt Society took it over and we had a contest and it's open to all elementary and high school students across Canada. We don't accept anybody that's um, uh, 
uh, like a professional artist. It's, it's, it's open for elementary and high school. And the way that we choose is based on the artwork and the description. We don't say, well, this is indigenous and separate them that way. The one year, I think it was 2018, was a, a, a um, I know that's not the correct term, but uh, uh, the, an East Indian per, uh, child had won, and we got a lot of flack for that. But uh, this year is uh, the winner of the 2021 art contest is Shane Homey standing beside me here today. Uh, she is uh, a grade 12 Cree student from Dawson Creek. Her great great grandparents went to, uh, both went to residential school. And she's wearing her design. Shane is a jingle dress dancer. She has been since she was a toddler basically I'm told by her mother and her uh, family can you like make some noise wherever you are wave your hands do something where are you oh right there okay yeah so thank you for for bringing her down from from Dawson Creek it was a 15-hour ride and I'm I hear that they did it all in one day that's yeah that's a long way to come so So her design is three indigenous girls from different tribes holding hands to represent the unity of our people's resilience and strength throughout the many years of suffering indigenous people had to face. So that is Shane's uh, description of her, her design. And uh, I want to acknowledge uh, Talco, Andrew DeVries. Devri Where are you, Andrew? Uh, 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 okay, yeah, standing with the family. So, Gukshem, thank you, Andrew, for being here. Andrew is with Talco, and uh, he, when he heard about the contest, uh, was Talco wanted to help, and we've had a lot of people wanting to help. So they uh, are sponsoring uh, Shane and her family to be here for their travel. So, Gukshem, thank you to Talco. I want to uh, finish by um, just acknowledging uh, there's uh, the uh, Chinese, uh, there's about 20 individuals um, from the Chinese Association in Vancouver, and that's probably not the right name. I didn't write it down, but Gukshjam, thank you for being here. And I, uh, when I do presentations, I talk about uh, in my book, when me and Granny went to have breakfast, that was a Chinese restaurant that we went to. And when in Williams Lake, we weren't allowed in the white man restaurants. It was the Chinese people that invited us into their restaurants because they had faced the same discrimination and knew what it felt like to be discriminated against. And um, I always joke and say, well, now I know why we like, we like Chinese food so much. <laughs> yeah. So we, and, and many elders and survivors in our communities still go to those Chinese food restaurants and uh, that's where we feel comfortable. We're accepted there. So uh, I just, I thank you for everyone from the Chinese community that came to, um, to learn and to honor survivors and their families and to remember those that never made it home. Today is history in the making. I was involved with uh, Bill C-369. That was the first attempt at to implement TRC's recommendation number 80. Uh, that uh, was to implement a statutory holiday for survivors, their families and their communities and to remember those that never made it home. And that's basically what Orange Shirt Day was. I didn't know about TRC recommendation number. It wasn't even thought of at the time. Well, maybe it was, but I didn't. Uh, it didn't come out in the report until 2015. Bill C-369 uh, died because of the election. So it was reintroduced as Bill C-5. And I was called to to uh, 
uh, say or to appear. It sounded like I had done something wrong. I was called to appear before the the committee uh, of the House of Commons after second reading, and I had done it for Bill C three six nine, and I was called on for C five again and changed a little bit about what I said, but. Um, it was stuck in the House of Commons since the end of November of 2020. We did letter writing. The uh, pol politicians all across Canada were putting pressure on them to get it going. And it just stayed there, no matter what we did. May 27th was when Gookby, Roseanne Casimir announced the 215 at to come loops. The very next day, the very next morning at nine o'clock my time, I got a call from Canadian Heritage Minister Gibo's office because he had, had put forth C5 and they said that it was going to be put through. So I was happy, I was sad, I didn't know what to think. And uh, within a week, it had received royal assent to be what it is today, the first national statutory holiday for truth and reconciliation and I heard about it on a Thursday night because I went to Kamloops that's where my son lives and my grandchildren I needed to make sure that they were okay I took my grandchildren out of school my two oldest ones to talk to them about what was happening and to ensure them to tell them that every one of granny's kids made it home because they I realized I never told them that and they were happy to hear that, the, the two older ones. And it was a long week and uh, it was a blur and very emotional. And uh, I had given up my, my hair appointment to, um, to go to Kamloops. And that was a Thursday night and I just, oh, I couldn't stand my hair anymore. I needed to get a haircut. So I was in my car, it was at nighttime. I was Googling, phoning everybody. And when I got the text from the Senate that it, it was now, it had received royal assent, I was just looking at a tree and I just thinking, I'm not getting my hair cut tonight. <laughs> and because uh, I was just so exhausted. And um, speaking of hair, I usually don't allow people to mess with my hair. So um, this, uh, I wear this because I know the significance of it. January 2019 is when Granny died at the age of 100. And I wanted that truck in honor of her. And you see on the back is 9.28.1918. That's Granny's birthday. So she would have been 103 uh, a couple of days ago. And um, I'd always wanted a truck for... Um, uh, the Williams Lake Stampede and Indigenous Peoples Day, we have a parade and now I have one. All we got to do is uh, get those uh, floofy pom-pom um, things and stick it on there and maybe a few balloons and we're ready to go. And um, I, we went to GM, Carter GM in Vancouver, they were the, one of the sponsors and I told them, oh yes, we forgot one thing, I want one of those uh, musical things that you could... Uh, program and have like the Dukes of Hazard and different, um, <laughs> different, um, uh, you know, like all those different uh, things to play when we're 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 in a in a parade. So uh, a couple of years ago, I arranged to have an orange truck. I found somebody in Walmart that had one and went up to them and said, "Can I call you and use your truck for the Williams Lake Stampede?" and my grandchildren came up, they were all excited, and at the last minute that person backed out. My grandson was just crying. He's like, why did they say they would and they wouldn't? And So we ended up just walking again with our flag in the stampede. And But now uh, we have a truck, and um, I believe that one day that truck will be in a museum somewhere. And um, uh, I was going to baby it, but the society said, use it. So uh, I will use it. Uh, my community is like an hour and a half on a dirt road and I might hit the ditch a time or two. So um, yeah, so anyway, I'm just being uh, rambling right now. So Gukstjam, thank you everyone for being here and uh, for making history, Gukstjam.
Thank you so much, Phyllis, for sharing your story and for sharing, sharing your joy. Your joy with us too, which we will, we will keep in our hearts as we, as we move through the next, the next times, times here. Um, I would like to present you with a gift from Sawalsa West, the school district. And as well, we have some students here from Christine Morrison, Christine Morrison Elementary who would like to give you a gift that they made specifically for you, Phyllis. And we also have some flowers for you to take back home with you. Perhaps we can just, yeah, put them on the, yeah. And these flowers are for Elaine. We know Elaine, the um, behind the scenes work that you've done for this and for us today, we really appreciate that too. And we have one more, we have one more bouquet coming our way here. And this is for you, Shane, to take back home with you, to enjoy. When you see it, think of this day. And did we give you a t-shirt? We will, we will get you a t-shirt, okay? <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, friends and neighbors. That's what we are here. And we're sharing sacred ground today. And I bless the presence of, of each and every generation that is represented here. Because you more than represent the generations that, that went to the school. Okay, can you hear me now? All righty, you're going to hear more then. Okay, thank you very much. I have a, a, a my, my uh, you, you, if I don't move my hands, my mouth doesn't work right, okay? Anyway, um, I want to thank you all for being here. Your presence blesses and sanctifies the ground on which so many generations suffered and died in without being looked after in a sacred manner. I'm gonna ask um, the Statlium drummers to uh, form up beside me here, please, because you're gonna participate in something here. So many beautiful words have been spoken today about the past. And I was reviewing all of the things that I've thought about for a whole week. And I believe that most of those things have been covered so far. I'm so happy to be here today to see you wearing your orange shirts in support of what is happening. I am especially proud to stand with my blood relative, Phyllis Webstad. We're closely related. My father, his name was Sweetway, a shapeshifter. His English name was Eric Hillman. And my mother was Iamatqua from Statlium Nation, Lillian Hillman. Her father was late Chief Harry Peters and his wife Julia. My name is Malihatqua. I'm oldest living relation. And I'm honored that our elders group here at Mission asked me to speak to you today. No matter what happened to me here in this school and to those who are here with us today, I love this land. I look across that valley here for five years. That was a joy to realize that there were many stories that had to do with history of our people. 
those things have stayed with me. And like Phyllis and every one of us who came to these schools, our clothing was taken away and we were stripped of everything. They tried to strip us of our identity. Well, I'm here to tell you it didn't work. Because we're here. Are we? We are here. Come on, let's hear it. Yeah. These, that's what this is for and what this is about. The more we understand about what happened in the past and the more actions that we're able to perform on behalf of those who were stolen and murdered and hidden away in unmarked graves, we do it to restore the dignity of those children and it helps to restore our own dignity. All life is sacred. We hold that to be true. And by being here today, this is what my eyes witness. And I'd also like to uh, say thank you that we're here wearing regalia if we choose, because we can. I'm holding tobacco here. I feel so honored to be offered tobacco to talk to you today. Because this tobacco brings my ancestors close to me. It helps to keep me focused in my mind, my heart, my spirit, my body. Phyllis gave me this beautiful sage from up home at Dog Creek. So I feel in perfect balance today. There are certainly relatives in which we with relatives. And thank you for leading the way. And thank you for Kamloops for leading the way. Again, over and over, it happens in the plateau country. And the great nation that spreads right across that plateau. Right across Armstrong, very large country. See? Anyway, um, I had a, a presentation to Shane. Uh, can you bring it forward? Where is it? Oh, yeah. Shane, please. Where are you? Oh. Okay. Uh, um, I'm a world traveler. Uh, I brought back some print from Australia. Uh, I absolutely love and adore and respect all the indigenous people of the world, and especially uh, my Australian relatives. We brought the Sundance there about 14 years ago. I went back there in 2019, and uh, I was there for five weeks, so they would have kept me there if they could have. And uh, I would have been willing to stay too, but uh, anyway. I brought this uh, print back. This one here uh, is with koala bears. And this is in the outback, uh, the, the print that's on here. And I brought this here today thinking that there is somebody out here that I would really like to give this to. And I'd like to thank you very, very much for coming all this way to make this day even more special. So uh, you might have to tuck in the waist a little bit, but I think it will fit you. <laughs> so there you go, my darling. Thank you. There are many memories that are brought back to us on days like today. And today is the fulfillment of the dreams of our ancestors that our people would finally be acknowledged. That our loved ones who didn't make it home would find, would be found, would be discovered, use whatever term we like. But we know that this day 
as a fulfillment of our ancestors for all of us. Because as survivors, we bear witness to history. And we share our history with you so that you will know and not repeat it. The world cannot go on by taking from those indig from all of us indigenous people. This is the first of the 94 calls to action of the Truce and Reconciliation Report, and it's number 80 on the list. And thank you for fulfilling this on our behalf. We have a lot of work to do. And I've been voting since 1962, let me tell you. And I'll tell you another thing. I've been listening to promises all my life, and I'm tired of just listening to promises all my life. Awesome. Hey! <laughs> so I'm saying to each and every one of you, you must be true missionites. It's all this rain and, and, and wet and uh, windy. You're all here. So when I say that, I, I try to not to uh, get too deep into things. But you're here. Your hearts are open. And I ask you continue, please continue, to hold those uh, the present government with so many promises made, and how many? The third election now? It's time for action. So, help us out. I'd also like to, uh, to uh, speak to my uh, grizzly bear spirit man. You make my life worthwhile. Having children makes the journey rich and rewarding. Thank you, Creator, for our children, our grandchildren, and our great-grandchildren. And thank you for each and every one of you who steps forward to give us a hand at this time. Um, could I ask the drummers to come, please? Um, uh, where, when I travel and when I work, I do any healing work, etc., I ask for participation. And um, four years ago, down in uh, Oregon at the uh, solar eclipse ceremony, I brought the bear and we bear danced. Now, the, the reason for that was to talk to the American spirit to wake up the eldest of our relations in the world to bring the message from the bear nation because bear knows where everything is buried to bring that all to the surface. So in the spirit of bringing the knowledge of where the, the babies and the children of our ancestors I call you, I'm going to call upon you to join us when we, when we, uh, where's our drummer? Head drummer. This is uh, my, my nephew, Chris Wells, and uh, we need a, a good rousing song for people to dance. Hello, <laughs> hello!
So Melly Hatqua, we'd like to present you with these flowers just on behalf of the greatest thank you ever for sharing your words and your beautiful dancing and um, the, 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 the joyous song that you shared and Priscilla, thank you so much as well. That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. I'd like to ask Mayor Paul Horn to come up to share a few words. Thank you very much, Vivian. First, let me say thank you to the elders and leaders of the indigenous communities that share this land. We thank you so much for sharing with us today. Thank you to Phyllis for spending the first official Truth and Reconciliation Day with us here in Mission. As you said, it is a historic day. And also, you've got me craving Chinese food now, so. <laughs> thank you to the Board of Education, Vivian and Sawasa West and all of the team that have helped put this day on today. I bring greetings from Mission City Council, all of whom are here today, and also from our MLAs, Bob Deeth and Pam Alexis. As you may know, Pam is recovering from a medical crisis and would love to be here, and Bob is at a Truth and Reconciliation event in Maple Ridge today. Today is the first official Truth and Reconciliation Day, and what I have been taught is that the reconciliation can only happen when the truth occurs. And so I would like to share with people today the three truths that I have been spending my time thinking about. And I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm a teacher. I'm a teacher. The first of these lessons is the idea that I was raised with that we should not mistake kindness for weakness. And nearly 500 years ago, Jacques Cartier came to this country and made his way down the St. Lawrence River, and he probably wouldn't have even made it to the rapids at Lachine if it weren't for the fact that he had taken two Haudenosaunee men as captives. And his men were starving of scurvy, and they would have probably died if not for the fact that the Haudenosaunee taught them how to make a tea out of pine and spruce needles. And in that moment, Indigenous people did something they have continued to do for 500 years, and that is show a generosity of spirit to European settlers. This country is based entirely in that, if you think about it. There would have been no fur trade, no salmon trade, without Indigenous exploration, without Indigenous people providing those commodities. The gold rushers wouldn't have survived if it wasn't for the fact that they met indigenous people that rescued them countless times. The first babies that were born in this area did not have the help of doctors or midwives. It was indigenous people who came and showed us how to do that. It was indigenous medicines that saved the lives of so many settlers. But what do we do? Well, the second truth is that we just didn't get it. Somehow we still managed to think that the European way was the right way, was the better way. And along the way, we extinguished the bison, the ox, the carrier pigeons, the Beotuk people. Along the way, we made it illegal to practice traditional faiths speak traditional languages, practice traditional cer ceremonies like the potlatch. And of course, we created the legacy that we are standing on here today and all that we have heard. We were wrong. We were not wiser. And that leads to the third truth. And you've heard others speak of it today. Who could blame indigenous people if what they wanted to do was be angry first. 
But that is not the lesson of today. And I feel very grateful for the spirit that has been brought to this day, and that is a reconciliation. So what we have been asked to do is one simple thing, to witness, to listen and learn. And so I ask all of those who share my ancestry to go home, teach your children the truths. Ask them to be listeners, something that we have not traditionally done well in these last 500 years. Thank you so much to everybody who is doing this work and inviting everybody else to be a part of it. Kwasoi. Thank you so much, uh, Mayor Horn, for joining us today. So a couple of weeks ago, Ross Milfarth from the Indian Residential Survivor School S Survivor Society, we had just some, some conversations about um, his wish to, to be here today, along with Lorraine Hans. And a couple of days ago, that's that, that so Lorraine, Lorraine Hans is his wife. Thank you, Ross. A couple of days ago, they, uh, Ross called and he had asked if they could have some time today just to present a banner that was created by some people who, with whom they work. And so I'd like to call up Agnes, Angus, sorry, Angus Wilson, Superintendent, Tracy Loeffler, Tracy Loeffler, who's a member of the board, and Rick McCamey, member of the board, and Randy Cairns, member of the board, and the person with whom I work all day, every day, and Marcy, thank you so much for being here today and for doing all of the behind the scenes work. Just really appreciate you being here today, so we want you to stand up here today with us as well. Good afternoon, everybody. I am Lorraine Hans. I guess I gotta eat the mic. <laughs> it tastes really good. <laughs> I, I work with uh, Canada Corrections and I am a pre-pathway elder for Corrections and this is what my um, program did, all the inmates that I teach and out of that, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, they made a banner for this, um, this is the second one that's been presented and there was about 10 in my program and on this banner it states intergenerations survivor 60 scoop at 215 plus and down there they put down moving forwards you know what moving forwards is all about right and then celebration of life everybody is always mourning all the time but each day we need to learn how to celebrate life like Today is a day that we celebrate life because we made it this far, right? Right? Okay, here I want to present on behalf of Kent Institution to the, the Mission School District. And they got hand, uh, the inmates have their handprints in the back there. And Arnie can fill in some more here if I miss something. Hey, Swell. La Huste Squeak. Talisa Squasta Ellis. My name is Mike. My Kumuk name is Lahush. And I, uh, I'm an indigenous liaison officer.
and I work out of Kent Institution. So this beautiful lady that I work with, she teaches the men that we work with about the culture and the history of our people. The old traditional teachings of how to live off the land and live in comfort, to how to deal with the pain and hurts So she, she had the men create this to give back. I myself had a very difficult life, but a traditional life. Because I have a, a beautiful lady here. Her name is Agnes Giesbrick. This is my, my mother's sister. And they both attended residential school here. But my mother, she didn't make it. The pain that she went through, the things that happened to my mom, my life giver, they didn't have trauma counselors back then. This is my sister, Kanish. We weren't raised with the culture because of the residential school. My mother didn't teach us because she thought when we went to public school, we're being, we're, we, she thought we we're going to be abused. My mother, my, my mother committed suicide because of what happened to her. I had a sister talk about alcoholism them trying to bury the hurt, the trauma that happened to them. Every time I see the Statlium elders and see, hear the Statlium songs, I hear my mom. But our elders or our parents were pretty smart because they knew one day that me and my siblings would get hungry for the culture. And all of my siblings now, including myself, my sister Kanish here is a longhouse dancer, Komoch. We dance for our auntie. We dance for our people. I myself am a powwow dancer. And I dance for my auntie and for all the elders, the ones that can't dance anymore. I always say to the people we work with, that there's a lot that you need to learn. My sister here, she shares her story with the men that we work with. And every single day I have to stand behind her to keep her strong. She shared this with, with many people in corrections a couple of days ago, the warden, the deputy warden, the AWO, the AWI, the MAI, 
and every single one of them cried. But today, to me, I believe and I truly understand that our culture is strong because of the people that are sitting here. They're the ones, auntie, all my aunties and uncles, the ones that cleared the way so I can do what I can do today. My p compassion, my purpose on earth is to help my people. And that's what I'll do until I am no longer here. I will continue to do that. I want to thank Lorraine for always pursuing and persevering no matter how much it hurts her to have to talk all the time about her pain. And she does it with an open heart and an open mind. And it's not easy where we work. But we do it because we love our people. I thank you on the behalf of all our elders, all our survivors here, all the people, this young lady has helped our people so much, the organizers, the singers, all the people that are standing here, I thank you for honoring my mom. I love you so much for doing that. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for coming here to honor my mom because I miss her so much. I cry, I wake up crying because she comes to visit me in my dreams. And she is here right now. And I thank you for honoring your all my relation hosts. Thank you so much. And once again, thank you, Ross and Lorraine, for coming today. We have we have a gift for you. So we have some orange shirts for you and as well a bouquet of flowers to enjoy. Thank you so much. Earlier today, we had someone uh, mention about the, the orange shirts that, that we are wearing, the orange shirts that are create, were created because we have a student, a very special student. Leo, are you out there somewhere? Leo is, he's a celebrity. I've never met you, met you before today, Leo, but we are so happy that you are here today. So this is Leo, and Leo, last year in the spring, submitted a beautiful design of the beaver or scalao. And we loved this, Leo. We loved this artwork so much that we all decided and the elders decided that we needed to put this beautiful drawing somewhere where it can be seen all over Mission and all over maybe BC. So we would like to say thank you, Leo, for sharing your beautiful gift and talent of artwork of the beaver, the beaver who represents wisdom. And so we have a gift for you today, Leo. You are such an artist. We thought what a better gift to give you than your own art set.
So on behalf of Sawals West Indigenous Elders and all of us here today, thank you so much, Leo, for being here today with us. I'd also like to say thank you to Tamara, his teacher, to Shane Sluziak. I'm not sure if he's here. He's the, there he is. He's over there. Thank you, Shane. Um, uh, Leo goes to Albert McMahon and Shane is, is the administrator there um, as well. I know, Leo, you've got a few other important adults as well that, that work with you. And um, we just want to say thank you so much. The support that that, that, that group of individuals has, have, has given Leo is a true testament to the work, you know, I believe that the workers all of the staff of Mission Public Schools do on a regular basis. So with that, thank you so much, Leo, for coming here today. I know it was a long day for you, and I just love your, love your design so much. Thank you, Tim. Leo, would you like to say anything today? Thank you. All right. <laughs> so we're just heading into the last part of the event today. And for this, I would like to, there are a number of people who need to be thanked, um, who helped me throughout this, this time of planning and organizing. And um, I'm just going to, Thank, yes, I do. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. That's my son. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I do want to say thank you to several people. Once again, Phyllis and Shane and Elaine, thank you so much for coming here today. And again, Leo and family, thank you too. So we had a number of people who were integral in planning this day, specifically the shape of the day. And I will name you and Marcy, if you wouldn't mind, yeah, you can go ahead and take the flowers to them, please. So the planning group, please accept these. If you, if you would like to come up in front and stand, please feel free to do that too. So Priscilla and Bill Wells, Agnes Giesbrecht, Jeanette Phillips, Cheryl Gabriel, Don Styron, Camille Laszlo, Sonia Williams, Marcy, Maureen and Joanna from the City of Mission, Michelle and Augusta from the Mission Friendship Center, the members of the board as well who are here today, and of course Angus Wilson, Superintendent. Thank you so much for helping me, helping me with this day. If we can. Crystal Williams. Thank you so much for coming today and spending the day making Bannock for everybody. I actually haven't had a chance to eat any yet, so I'm really looking forward to that in a little bit here. So thanks so much, Crystal, and of course, all of the little ones that she brought with her to help her do that work. Brittany O'Rourke, are you still here, Brittany? She's over there. Oh, Brittany, hi. <laughs> Thank you for coming today, Brittany. And Brittany took care of the, the smudging today. We have a gift for you too, um, Brittany. Thank you for coming. As I mentioned, after the event, we also will have Dion and Magnus who will be, who will be doing the cedar brushing. Um, we had Dan Kim from FNHA. I'm not sure, Dan, if you are still here, but please find Marcy. 
And Marcy has a gift for you, Dan. Kirsten Hargreaves, are you here today? Okay, we'll go on. Uh, C.K. Hogan, as you've noticed, C.K. is a student who is, has now graduated, and C.K. is, um, he's doing the video work for the day today. Thank you so much, C.K., for coming here. This work that you're doing today is monumental. You are documenting history, and we very much appreciate you doing the work today. Thank you. We also had another helper today, Amber. She's my daughter. She had to leave, but she was taking some still photos, which we'll hopefully share. And Josh, thank you so much. Josh is doing all of the tech stuff, which is not my area of expertise at all. <laughs> we have a number of individuals from the Vancouver Career College. Thank you for coming and volunteering and helping. Please find Marcy, we have a gift for you as well. And Sawalsa West staff, if you are here still today, thank you so much for coming. We know that you did a lot of work in it again behind the scenes. Make sure that you find Marcy for some, for some gifts that we have for you. And also Special O. Special O, that was the group that took care of the parking and they did an absolutely amazing job keeping things organized out in the, out in the parking lot out there. I did also want to mention that the flowers that were received, that some of you received today as, a, as gifts and the flowers that were given, the sunflowers, those were donated by a company called Twiggage and Bloom. So I just wanted to mention that and say thank you so much. As well as the food for today was donated, that was donated by Tim Hortons. Also want to make mention, thank you to the Mission Record for again coming to document the event, What's on in Mission? Val Bilsberger from the Mission Archives, and also to the Mission RCMP who have been in and around the area. The last thing that I'd like to say today is thank you to all of you. You've been a witness to this historic event in honor of those who survived the Indian residential schools, those who did not, and those yet to be found. Please accept this responsibility to share what you've learned here today. Share it with others and to follow the teaching of the wisdom and the, of the beaver and wisdom. Kwasai and all my relations, thank you once again for coming. We do have some t-shirts left and we do have some extra giveaways. So if you are interested in any of those, we can uh, we'll have we'll be we'll be set up just in, in behind. But at this this at this time, I just like to invite anybody to come up and sing and drum, so that we can end the day with good hearts and good minds. Hello, my name is Geraldine Stanley. I would like to acknowledge my son here who brought me. He's representing his father from. It's St. Eugene's Cranbrook. He's also representing his uncle Ernest and uncle Michael Stanley, also of Cranbrook. So St. Eugene's was here, but I'm a survivor from this school here, the old St. Mary's. Thank you very much.